Hi, and welcome back to part two of the story of Mallory and Irvine on They Did What. Okay, so climbing beyond the second step. Yes. So based on what Odell saw, and I'm going back to a different climber's theory now. Okay. This is no longer Michael Tracy. Right. These climbers think they would have reached the third step around 1.30. Because modern climbers can get from step two to three in 30 minutes. Okay. Um, by which point they're probably very short on air. Yeah. So this is coming back to the article from The Wire, written by Philip Summers and AJ Dantekar. Mm-hmm. And he, they believe that they probably had one tank of air left between them. Oh, boy. And do they climb together and share the tank? Or does one of them... Wait. Yeah, just one sit and wait oh. while the other goes for the summit. Now, based on the fact that at the time you would leave your climbing buddy to do that, yeah. these guys believe that Irvine waited sitting in his sleeping bag behind uh. a crop of rocks um, called the Olgas. And they've put quite a bit of evidence forward for this and they think people should go and check the Olgas. No one's looked there uh. because you might find some discarded air supply couple of other things right. that could tell us they got to that point at least yeah which would be amazing <laughs> i'm not gonna lie though just the name of them all i can envision is just a number of little old russian ladies angrily <laughs> standing at the top of everest just like why are you waiting behind us why like, yeah get up you did not bring borscht go away <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah if someone were to look there it could prove this theory that would be really cool it would um and these guys say, if the theory in this article is correct, then two oxygen cylinders and possibly Mal Mallory's metal carry frame as well, so the thing that the, mm. the air supply was in, they had that little metal yeah. frame on their back, oh, okay. um, as well as discarded food tins may be concealed, semi-buried amongst this mysterious boulder cluster. Or Mallory. We'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realise I was jumping ahead. <laughs> we'll get to Mallory. Um, yeah, and I've already covered that you would leave your buddy back then. Yeah. Now, the other thing is, there was a squall at 2pm, so oh, some really bad weather coming through, yeah. strong winds, bit of uh, snow. It went as far down as Camp 6, where Odell was. Oh. Um, and it didn't pass until 4pm. So these guys say Mallory likely p paused during this storm, um, and I agree with them. He's not the kind of man to turn back, especially 125 metres. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Mitch is like... <laughs> I was trying to stifle a yawn, not because funny. it's boring, but because... <laughs> <laughs> I was also up at 11.30, but I was watching animals do things to people that was funny. <laughs> that sounds very odd. Yeah, fail army. It's <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, he was... If this is true, he was 125 metres away when the squall hit. Yeah, no, he's not coming back down. No. He's staying. He's going to make... He's going to go for it. Uh, we've got more Lunar New Year sounds outside. <laughs> um, so if this series is correct, then he may have hit the summit at 4.30pm. Oh, okay. If they both went for the summit, sharing a tank of oxygen, a bit later. Yeah. So roughly 12 hours after he yeah. sort of sits out in the morning. Yep. Yeah. Um, then coming back down, they could have reached the base of the second step by 6.30pm. Which means by the time they reach the bottom of the first step, um, and therefore past the most dangerous sections, mm. it's fully dark. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Now, any climber will tell you that the most dangerous part of the climb is the descent. Yeah. Um, and it's part of why I believe they made the summit and died on the descent. Oh, okay. Not on the ascent. Some people also think that maybe they turned around at some point and fell and oh. died. Um, again, looking at Mallory as a person, it does seem unlikely that he knew it this was his around. last chance. Yeah. He knew he wasn't going back. Mm. And some people also think he took Irvine because he knew Irvine would follow him. Whereas Odell might have said, mate, we've got to stop. Oh. Oh, that's... Yes, Oof. that's a bit darker. I like it, but boy, that's a lot darker. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. They're at the bottom of the first step. Now... Around this area, you have a lot of loose rocks. Yeah. Like, Everest isn't some snowy mountain. It's a lot of loose rocking areas that you can slip on, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So, this theory, 
um, and I'll go into why it does make sense, is that Mallory lost his footing and fell, but okay. Irvine caught him. They roped together. Oh. Um, and the reason for this is Irvine's ice axe was found just below the second step. Oh. I.e. he may have dropped it to grab the rope. Yeah. Um, and grab Mallory. Hmm. Then they think that he may have fallen again a bit later and Irvine wasn't as quick um, and the rope snapped and he fell to his death. Oh, jeez. So, let's go into the evidence. Right, yeah, sure. Now, now that it's dark and depressing, let's look at the facts. So in 1933, that ice axe was found. Okay. At 8,460 metres. No forensic evidence pointing it to any suspect. <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, no one else has been up in that time. Yeah. It matches the make of the axes taken on the trip. Oh, okay. Originally, it was believed to be Mallory's. Um, and that's partially because everyone thought Irvine had been the reason they died. Everyone was like, Irvine's inexperienced. He fell. <laughs> Jeez. And Mallory went with him. Oh, God. Which <laughs> ignores the dangers of climbing. It also ignores the fact that Mallory would have cut the rope. <laughs> Depends how fast the fall was. Yeah. Um, but then later they found these little notches in the wood that matched something else that belonged to Irvine. Oh, okay. So in 1960, uh, a Chinese climber, Zhu Jiang, he noted a body sitting upright in the shelter of a rock on the northeast ridge, the approach that Mallory and Irvine are using. Oh. In a sleeping bag. Oh boy. At 8,300 metres. Now, access to this route for Europeans was closed by the Chinese government in the 1950s. Right. No one had climbed during the war. Yeah. No one else had died at this altitude. Oh. So this body is one of them. Yeah. Like, we know that. Yeah. The thing is, he didn't tell anyone until 2001. Um, oh, that's helpful. <laughs> that's real helpful, buddy. The search for Mallory and Irvine was in 1999. Oh, good. Yeah, two years after the fact. Oh. Um, and people also had kind of ignored him because they didn't oh, okay. realise that two of Mallory and Irvine's sleeping bags were missing from Camp 6. Oh. So they're like, oh, it's, you know, he's in a sleeping bag. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, right. In 1975, other Chinese climbers uh, talked about the English dead. They'd seen a body near their camp. The clothing was disintegrated when touched. Um, the climber who found him also put a finger like this to indicate there was a hole in his face. Right. And his skin had deteriorated. Three. Three times they've set off firecrackers now. <laughs> so this body does get found. And some people are like, well, maybe it, this doesn't match because the body was found face down. Oh. Potentially, though, he had actually done a basic burial and flipped the body. Oh, okay. We don't know. Right. So the point is there's been two English dead noted by Chinese climbers. Okay. And the reason they know that one is the English dead, why they called him that, he had suspenders on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That's the cultural identifier on a dead body for the English mm -hmm. from the late 1800s through to <laughs> the midnight. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. So, in 1999, I mentioned there was a search for Mallory and Irvine. Mm. So, that's when they find oxygen cylinder 9. Right. Uh, some people say there was evidence it was malfunctioning rather than that it was empty and they put it down. Again, mm -hmm. there's a lot of sides to this. Uh, Jochen Hemleb, uh, German, mm. he had charted out where he thought it was most likely they would find Irvine's body. Right. Based on reports of those bodies mentioned. Okay, so the well, Specifically English the English dead, the other right. one they didn't know about yet. Okay. Um, and the position of the ice axe. Okay. Um, so they're looking, Conrad Anker finds Mallory. Oh! Yeah. It's about 300 metres below the ice axe. Oh! And 100 metres in, like, Inward. sideways, yeah. Okay. Oh! Oh, so like off to the side, not straight down. Yeah. Ooh. So... As I said, the searchers were expecting to find Irvine's body. Yeah, not... Not Mallory. Not Mallory. Um, so, yeah, part of this is they thought, less experienced climber, he's going to be the one who fucked up. 
Yeah. Um, so Mallory's clothing was gone in sections. You're talking about natural materials. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, degradation. Exposing his back and his legs, which had become sun bleached. Oh. So a lot of bodies on Everest, they become sort of mummified. Yeah. Um, it's very odd when you look at the pictures of Mallory's body because there's skin missing on his um, buttocks and nothing underneath. Like, it looks like it's just an empty hole. Oh, that's weird. Which might just be the weird pictures. It might just be the angle yeah. they're taken at. Um, but yeah, so his back is exposed, his legs are exposed, his butt's exposed. But you can see there's still some material on his arms. Right. And specifically, his collar was still there. Ah. Oh. And so when they turned up his collar, G. Mallory was written. Well, see, now, now I feel like I need to apologise to my mother for always writing my name in my school clothes. <laughs> Like, I could have been identified on Everest if yeah. she had have kept doing that. Um, and some people, when they found him, were like, oh, maybe it's Irvine, he's borrowed Mallory's clothes. No. But when they go through his pocket, it's Mallory. Yeah. Like, he's got stuff in his pocket, and that's really important. Now, there were severe rope jerk injuries on his body. Okay. So the rope is still there. Oh, okay. And there's massive injuries from the rope just above it. Like, it's he's been stopped. Oh. Very suddenly on the rope. Oh, like he was on the receiving end of the stop. As in he was falling and yeah. someone's grabbed him. Yeah. And that's why they think he fell once and then fell a second time and died. Time. Because that rope check injury indicates the fall was halted. Yeah. Um, he did die from injuries caused by a fall though. Okay. So he's got head trauma. Like oh, okay. a hole in his head. Um, and his left leg is broken. Like, oh. very badly broken yeah <laughs> um like yeah he didn't survive it okay some people think that the head trauma injury is the second time he fell he was trying to slow the descent with his axe oh. like he's holding on against something the axe flicks off something essentially and hits him in his head oh that's oh dark yeah yeah I'd really rather think he just fell and hit the ground hit something yeah um and died quickly mm. i don't know if this is one of the theories but are we sure that the head injury happens for the second fall because if it happens no. for the first one and he's got a concussion mm. or an altered brain state and is like no we can keep going it's <laughs> this way and that's what leads to his death i Maybe. mean that's the human brain is a confusing thing. I think, I think they're pretty sure he died from that oh, injury. Oh, okay. Like, it's pretty bad. Right. Um, I mean, you've already got an altered brain up there. Yeah. You talk, you, there's cases of people got, with summit fever yeah. who will pass someone dying to make the summit. Oh, and boy. it happens a lot up on yeah. the top of Everest because of the altitude and the summit. Yeah. Which, again, is why I think he wouldn't have stopped going no, for the summit. No, he's he got I. summit fever at that point. Yeah. And he's got the first case of summit fever. Mm. Yeah. Um, now, people were expecting to find a camera. They had a little pocket camera oh, from okay. Kodak. And Kodak had said, based on the cold um, and whatnot, they would probably actually be able to develop the film. It's which helpful. could show photos of them on the summit. Yeah. But Re it rewrites yeah, a lot of history. It does. And angers a few estates. <laughs> um, but it wasn't on Mallory's body. Oh. And I will come back to what was found in Mallory's body when I go into further evidence. But first, <laughs> in 2001, there was a second expedition. Yep. Um, they found nearly every pre-World War II camp on the mountain. Mm -hmm. um, but the search was stopped. Uh, there was some bad weather. There was a number of climbers in distress. Oh. Uh, not from their group searching, just oh. people actually climbing. Okay. And so the team focused on helping these climbers down yeah. the mountain over their search for two dead men. Right. Yeah. And whether they made the summit. Just like we get told with a wink and a nudge if we have to evacuate the museum. People first, <laughs> then objects. <laughs> I'm always sort of like, I can do a person and an object. <laughs> um, so in 2004, there was bad weather and a small team, so they found nothing. Mm. 2007 and 2010, again, found nothing of note. Right. So people are constantly searching. Yeah. 2019, there was a search for Irvine's body. Okay. Based on Tom Holzell's theory for where he is. Mm -hmm. um, the now, August? No, Tom Holzell has a different theory. Oh, okay. Now, 
I've read Tom Hosell's book. He's the one who I first read. Oh. Um, he wrote his original theories before Mallory was found. Oh. He was one of the strong proponents of Irvine having fallen. Okay. And I feel like he wasn't quite willing to change his theory. He made the new evidence fit his theory. Oh, that's not good. Yes. Um, so, you know, this 2019 search was very sure they'd find him in a certain spot, and they didn't. Uh, and it's like, okay, but there are other places he could be. Yeah. So, I don't quite understand this search. I'm going to say this, because they felt they had to follow Mallory, Ma <laughs> they had to follow Mallory and Irvine's route to the summit, and then back down to find Irvine. Oh. It's like, why do you need to go to the summit, guys? You know how tiring this trip is. Yeah. Why aren't you just focused on finding Irvine? Yeah. Um, it's but still... It's implying that Irvine even made it to the mm. summit. Yes. Um, it is a beautiful documentary. I like the way it's shot. Mm. Great views of the mountain. It really gives you a concept of how difficult it is. Yeah. Um, but, yes. So, one of the guys goes off route to look for where they think Irvine's body is. They think it's in a crack. Oh, okay. This is based on that Chinese climber who saw him. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, he does a little search and he's like, I can't find him. I think since he's been seen, he must have been swept off the mountain and down to the abyss. Right. I'm like, okay, but maybe Hellsell's got the position wrong. Yeah. You know, or maybe you just didn't look in the right crevasse. Um, they also used a drone to look for him. Oh. So I think there is potential that people could look again through drones. Yeah. Because it make a lot more sense using yeah. drones. Yeah. Um, because the thing with how high his body is or was, is it is the death zone for climbers to look for him. It's not safe. Mm. You know. Yeah. A lot of difficulties with finding Irvine. Mm. But I remember in Holzell's original theory, he thought, originally, I don't know when he changed it, that Irvine had fallen all the way down to the bottom and we'd never find him. Oh, okay. And then obviously more stuff's happened. Yeah. Um, but yes, so we do know he was seen. Okay. Uh, to be fair, the 1970 was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> but if he was in a crack in a crevasse, it seems odd for the wind to somehow suck him out. Yeah. Because there are other bodies that the wind has eventually pushed them on, off the mountain. Hmm. Um, I can't yeah. imagine being like somehow creating the perfect wind tunnel inside a crevasse mm. that spits the body out. That's what I thought too. Especially if it's been there long enough, the possibility that it's now attached to the actual ice mm. and snow kind of... Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, here is the circumstantial evidence that they did summit. Right. One, Mallory's snow goggles were found in his pocket. Okay. Which suggests that the fall happens at night. Ah. Because there's no way he's going to take them off during the day. Yeah. Um, because he's going to get snow blindness. Yeah. Um, which, you know, dark. I believe in Holzell's book originally, he says that they didn't have a flashlight with them. Mallory oh, yeah. had left it in the tent. Oh, of course. Of course, Mallory. <laughs> so if that's the case, then they've got no light. They're staying at night oh, after that massive climb. Oh, my goodness. He was, he has been mentioned to have been a bit of a forgetful man sometimes. Oh good. I'm going up the mountain. <laughs> what have I forgotten? <laughs> Legit. <laughs> All my snow gear. <laughs> um, also in his pocket was his watch, knife and equipment list. Okay. Um, as well as an envelope which he noted the amount of oxygen in the cylinders as they're going up. Ah. Um, and that's partially why they think they had more than he said he was going to take. Right. Because of the way he's noted down the oxygen. Now, the most important piece of circumstantial evidence mm. is that he always carried a picture of his wife, Ruth. Mm. And he had said, if I make the summit, I'm going to put this picture of you on the summit. Aww. I'm going to bury it. I know, beautiful. So, to be clear, there's paper preserved in his pocket. Right. But also, the one... Yeah, the photo, which would be just as easy to preserve. Yes. The photo's not there. Oh... And so this is the piece of evidence that a lot of people point to. Oh, there's a small yeti shrine somewhere worshipping <laughs> Ruth. <laughs> yeah, some people have said, what if he took it out at some point and the wind ripped it away? Which, I guess could happen. Yeah, I mean, we've seen it happen enough in Pixar movies. <laughs> <laughs> or someone else has pointed out, what if he realised he wasn't going to make the summit and buried it at the highest point he reached? Oh. 
But I, yeah, I, I don't think he's stopping. No, I don't think he's. Do I. I don't think he's leaving Ruth at anything less than the very Summit. tippy top. And we know that he he falls below the first step. Yeah. So that is the descent. Yeah. Because they've dropped oxygen above that, and Odell's seen them above that. Yeah. Yeah. So, if if we've seen them above. Hmm. Yeah. How have we seen them above? If uh, unless yeah. my yeti theory holds true. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, they've either summited and fallen on the descent, mm. or they've stopped somewhere before the summit, and again fallen on the descent. Uh -huh. um, again, based on who Mallory is, I do think he summited. Yeah, I do like the theory that um, Irvine waited for him, like oh, a, while yeah. he went up. But yes, yeah, so Odell, after they hadn't come back. He went up looking for them. Mm. He went to. He didn't actually go above Camp Six. He wasn't supposed to. Yeah. He puts the sleeping bags down in the snow and across to indicate have given up, can't find them, oh. waiting for instruction. Um, and so that's the end of the trip. Oh gosh. And based on that second body that's seen, it sounds like after Mallory fell, Irvine's crawled into a crevasse to protect himself from the wind. Oh, jeez. And... And he's not thinking clearly. Yep. And as happens up there, sometimes you go for a rest and you just don't get up. Yeah. Um, there was a the first woman and the first German to die in the death zone on Everest. She was with another man and a Sherpa. Mm. And she said, we're just going to sit down and have a rest. And the Sherpa's like, no rest. We need to keep walking. Yeah. The two of them sat down, not the Sherpa. Yeah. Um, and never got up. Jeez. And her body was there for ages where people mummified. Her hair would be blowing behind oh, her. I think I've actually seen that one. Mm. Oh, no, she's creepy. Well, she, she got blown off recently. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds bad. But yeah, her body um, eventually got knocked away by oh. the wind. Um, so even if they did summit, yeah. which, yep, the romantic in me wants to believe they did, because yes. if they died, at least they made it. Yeah. Well, if they, they did die. At least they did make it if they to. died <laughs> they're just wandering around up there <laughs> superhumans i say i think we've seen this section of the mountain before but, uh... <laughs> um it doesn't take away from hillary and tenzing's achievement no, not because at all. they're the first to ascend and descent yes yeah being the first one to do something but not be able to come back and say you did it mm. that's different from being the first one to do it and live to tell the tale yes but yeah, so I, I strongly believe that Everest was summited back in 1924, yeah. um, based on the circumstantial evidence, and that, yeah, it's just a sad ending for them. Yeah. I like that really out of all of it, the thing that I'm unsure about is just where they died and why. Yes. That I'm pretty convinced that <laughs> just, yeah. just based on what you've shown, like, they made at least one of them yes. made it to the top. Um, there's a part of me that's like, oh, he made it to the top, and there's the possibility that he, the other one, died while he was going to the top. Well, no, because based on the rope, oh, we know they were descending together. Okay. Irvine had to have grabbed Mallory. So he couldn't, he couldn't have got that by, sort of anchoring his rope himself. No, I don't think so. I don't think anyone's ever said well, that would be. For once, someone has been able to disprove my dark and pessimistic thoughts <laughs> on a subject. <laughs> I'm not sure if, if Mallory saw Irvine failing, he would have kept going. I think that might yeah. have been the point where he might have stopped. Yeah, uh, maybe. Um, but yeah, so yeah, the main thing is people do think Mallory just slipped oh. on some loose rock. Yeah. And, you know, the first fall, he's a bit disorientated. Yeah. And then the, and second, then the second one happens. one's the killer. Um, some people even think after that first fall, when Irvine saved him, Mallory cut the rope between them because he was concerned he was going to fall again. Uh, oh. To protect Irvine. Jeez. I know. Do you want to know? Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break your heart now. The saddest part of all this is that Irvine's parents left the back door unlocked for three years. Oh, because... He might come home. I know. Isn't oh. that just gut wrenching? I'm sure their insurance premium went through the roof too. <laughs> the number of times they got robbed after that became public knowledge. <laughs> but it's just so sad. It's like no, your your son is not alive. 
Oh, Your son geez. is because he was he was twenty two. Yeah. And he was so young. Does I'm assuming that for a long time made him the youngest person to die on Everest. Yeah, it would. I don't know when the next one is. I'd be surprised if it's that much younger than twenty two. Like I think mm. it'd be coming down to weeks or days for that. You know, one of those fantastic records you don't want to hold. Nineteen. Oh no. Queenslander. Oh, of course it's one of ours. Mm. Of course it's an Australian. Oh no, no, she's alive. Sorry. Oh, okay. That came up as <laughs> Everest's youngest climber, and she's talking oh. about the dead. Oh, okay. But it is a 19 year old. But it wasn't a, the youngest person to die on Everest yep. was 19. Okay. Ugh. Gee. Yep. Well, that's. Hey, Irvine's in the list, though, of the youngest. Yeah. Well, you would expect him to be. Yeah. Gee. So, um, yeah, that's the sad well, tale of Mallory and Irvine. I, I like that for once there's more of a question mark than an exclamation point at the end mm, of our there They is. Did What. Yeah, they did. Also, thank you for finally doing a dark enough one to sort of balance <laughs> out some of mine. It's okay, this is probably a two-episode two, two episode, episode as well. This might get broken down into, yeah. I think it needs to. Yeah. <laughs> they'll go up on the same day, but... Oh, that's nice of us. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but they'll just be broken into two parts. Mm. I say that knowing full well I'm in charge of the video, not the edit, uh, <laughs> not the audio. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's a tale that sticks with me. Sometimes I think about it at night. Yeah, it's just heartbreaking and fascinating. And like you can't walk past the camping section without seeing a sleeping bag and being like, but "Where is he?" It's I didn't even know about that sleeping bag until this. Oh, wow. It's interesting. Like, there's part, a lot of it I knew. The yeah. ice axe, like, Mallory's body, obviously. Um, some theories about Irvine, but I hadn't heard the story about the sleeping bag mm. until researching for the episode. Well. Also, as a side note, I don't know if I'll keep this in the episode. I just need to tell you. Um, <laughs> the British weren't allowed back to Everest after the documentary got released about this. So there's a film, 1924 film, yeah. from one of the guys, Noel. Yeah. The last name Noel, not the first yes. name Noel. Right. He was a filmmaker. He released um, footage of it. It's great footage. Yeah. But he also brought some monks over to England without asking the Dalai Lama and used oh, them as part boy. of the like opening for the film. Oh, God. And the Dalai Lama was like, yeah, you're not allowed in our country. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. That's fantastic. <laughs> It, it's amusing because it's the Dalai Lama being like, how dare you have Tibetan monks outside Tibet? Mm -hmm. And the irony of hindsight with the <laughs> history of the Dalai Lama. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, well, um, with that, guys, I guess that's yeah. the end of today's episode of They Did What? Yes, they did what? We acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea, and community. We pay our respect to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today.